Welcome to another episode of Grown Folks Talking Live with your favorite transformation expert and woman, Dr. Akila Faye. It's such a joy to be here today to see another day, especially with what's happening between the pandemic, the so-called hunting season, the negativity of just people, life. Every day becomes a more miraculous experience. And it's even more wonderful to wake up and see the face of my handsome, intelligent son, who will be joining me today on this episode. Why? Because we're talking about raising black boys. I prefer the word melanated, but that is our word for right now in this century. So he's going to join us and tell his experience with me. I'm going to tell about my experience. We're going to share some strategies. And you guys, go ahead, sit back, relax. Because you know what we do on Grown Folks Talking Live. It's your time to transform and escape from some of the things of the world. Anyone can talk to you about sex, money, everything else. But here, we want to talk about your mind, your body, and your soul. Getting back in balance in order to live the most prosperous life possible. So I'm going to go ahead and replay this track, Add It Up, by NBHD Nick. While we're doing that, get your pen, your pad, go ahead and shoot an email or join into the chat. Let us know your thoughts. Akilafay at gmail.com, A-C-Q-U-I-L-L-A-F-A-Y-E. Let's go ahead and get started. are here introduce you to my wonderful intelligent handsome very caring and charismatic outgoing entrepreneur engineering like little builder just a little architect just can make anything from a piece of lint a paper towel and random objects that he may find my son Savan Savan say hello to everybody hey everybody so, Vaughn, we always start off this your first time on the show. Thanks for coming on today. You're welcome. I would like to know. Everybody who tunes in knows we start off with gratitude. Yes. So, in our household, you guys, we do gratitude a different type of way. We do the pyramid. Mm-hmm. We do the pyramid. We do the pyramid. Do you remember all of the steps? 
I do not remember all of the steps for the pyramid. You don't. So three things that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. Things. Then what? Two things that? Two things that I want to happen. And then one thing that I'm going to work on. Yeah, two things that you're great at and I one mean, thing you want to happen. two things that I'm great at and one thing I'm going to work on. See, this is part of this patience thing. We do this all the time. He's like, uh, but we change it up. So when he said two things he wants... And one thing that he's going to work on. So three things we're grateful for is what we're going to do. Two things that are awesome about ourselves. And one thing we're going to work on. You're going to speak up. Yes, ma'am. So you knew you got to speak to the mic. There you go. Scoot up for Jack. So three things you're grateful for. I'm grateful for being here and being on the show right now. That's my first thing. My second thing is being here with my mom. Third thing, spending time around the people I love. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I'm grateful that we both woke up this morning. It's a given, right? Yes. <laughs> number two, that we always have tasty food. Yes. And number three, that I am supported by a lot of positive, uplifting people. So that even when things aren't always the best or how I want, I have a support system that helps me. You're part of that support system. Oh, I did not know that. Yep, you are. You are. You're my motivation. So you guys, think about three things that you're grateful for. You can say them out loud. You can say them in your head. You can write them down. All right. Now, let's see. Remember, two things that what? Two things that I am great at. Yep. I am great at building and my second thing drawing okay and you get it building and drawing well, how you know you get it building and drawing because i draw i draw i draw very good pictures and i draw spiritual symbols without me realizing it and then when it comes to building i just like i like making cars and planes and gliders for tiny lego people all right. What do you what do you make your gliders and your planes and things out of? Sometimes I might use paper and some straws and some straws maybe or a few mat or a match. What about if you're making a car? You make a car out of straw and paper and a match. I use my Legos. You do what? I use my Legos. Now I've seen you make cars out of other stuff too. I have made cars. Well, I'm made asking stuff. you the question. And some of the cars that I've made before are usually made out of cardboard. Sometimes, sometimes I make them out of cardboard and a bit of paper, and they'll work really well. You also do model cars, right? Yes, I do some model cars. Earlier, um, a few months ago, I built a model Nissan Skyline GTR. That's what's up. And just a couple of days ago, you built something, too. A couple of days ago, I worked on a RC car. I worked on my RC Bentley. I wanted to um, make it faster. So what I did was I switched out the motor and made a body kit out of some lightweight air dry clay. And that's pretty cool. And it works pretty well. It does. It does. So two things that I'm good at, I'm going to say being patient because I've gotten way better with patience and being able to give him space to be himself while also still correcting behaviors and correcting them in a way that is productive and supports growth versus in ways that stunt or hinder. Now, I wasn't always that type of, of parent or person. So I love the growth that I've had with becoming more patient and understanding in those regards. And number two that I'm great at is being myself. That's one thing that no matter what environment, what place, who I'm around, whatever, I'm always great at being me. So everybody listening, what are two things that you're great at? And I know we could keep going on and on and on. We could do a whole three hours, two weeks, months, and just list off all the greatness that we have. But right now, just think about two. This is the triangle activity. And then one thing you're going to work on, young man. One thing I'm going to work on is 
Paying attention is listening. Which one? Paying attention or listening? Or is that the same thing to you? Same thing to me. So which which phrase you want to go with? Listening. Listening. Why is that? Because most times I can get told I can I can be told something and told not to do it and I'll do it without think without thinking about without thinking about the consequence of what could happen. Hmm. So listening what's the benefit of listening? Benefit of listening, nothing can get damaged or and no one will get hurt. Nothing bad could happen to anybody if I listen. Now, does listening only apply to not getting hurt and not breaking stuff? No, it also applies to being at school when it comes to doing work. Or at home when you want to write something or if somebody says you can write or if somebody says you can write something about whatever you think about. Okay, so listening, you said at school. So why did you mention school first and then home second? I mentioned school. The reason I mentioned school first is because usually when you're at school, you have a time period that you have to finish. So... I think listening would be is it also very good at school because if you have a time constraint time constraint is it? Damn, time constraint. Mm-hmm. Time constraint and you need to finish it quickly, you can go ahead and start writing what they have on the board while listening to what they're saying. Okay. So does that apply to learning other things or just schoolwork? It applies to learning other things. Such as? Such as if you were learning how to code or edit something, edit something. You can learn from somebody who knows how to do it. And you can keep practicing and practicing until until you get it right. Or you do your best, or you can keep doing your best to do it. Okay. One thing I'm going to work on is breaking stuff down in multiple ways. Because everybody process is different. I'm a teacher. I'm a parent. And you know, I have more experience than my child, obviously. No more than him. Every parent listening, aunts, uncles, mentors, cousins, let's think about it. In a lot of cases, we know more in regards to life. But they may know more about some of this technology that's out here. They might know more about some of the new developments that's out here. So we can both learn from each other. But for me, I want to break down the basics a little bit differently. Like, for instance, when my son said listening, you know, I want that to apply to, oh, man, when I'm learning how to cook and I'm in the kitchen, that's listening as well. And we're taking a walk and it's like we're going down a steep, steep hill and it's like, hey, be careful on the curb. That's listening as well. When he's in an environment and he hears a fire alarm go off to understand, oh, that's also listening. Listening is simply using your ears, Savon. Ah, okay. Yeah, anytime you use your ears, your ears work? They work. Do both ears work? Yes, both you ears sure? work. You sure? Yes. You positive? Yes. Like? Yes, I am 100% positive that both of my ears work. Okay, so anytime you hear a sound, that's listening. Ah. It's not, listening does not mean follow directions. Okay. See, I thought you knew that, man. What? I do. Say what? I do. You know do. That. I was just make. I was making it go with like going work and learning. I wasn't thinking about the fact of I. I was making it go with work and learning instead of thinking about the fact that it actually means I'm hearing with my ears. Mm-hmm. So, in essence, is it that you want to be a better listener, or you want to be quicker with your work? I want to be quicker with my work. Okay. Okay. Because you build beats and all kind of things, so that requires a lot of listening. So, you all, raising a young man, you see how this conversation just went. One, when we're talking to our children, I just want to say we got to be understanding to the fact that they're children. Even if they're really, really smart and really articulate, have good grades or don't have good grades, they are still children. And we still are the advisors think of yourself as an advisor 
or a manager knowing like we can't control them but we can definitely influence them and guide them and with the current climate my son is going into middle school and i'm just grateful that he's going into middle school that's one because you know we've heard about some of the children who have gotten shot on playgrounds and in walmart playing with guns bless their souls you know we hear about children who not just from police violence but just their neighborhoods that they live in, drive-bys, stray bullets hitting them, and they don't get to make it, you know, past first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. But particularly in this current climate, there's so much chaos going on that, you know, I talk to parents who have a whole lot of fear, but then I also talk to parents who don't. I'm one of the ones who doesn't wake up in fear, but I am aware. I am cognitive that you know, sometimes just him going outside to play with somebody with COVID, that, that could be an issue. Depending on how that child's raised, that could create, you know, conflicts because he's not raised in a confrontational environment. Going out, he's polite, but at the same time, if he's hanging out as he gets older and he's around people, he has to be aware of what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. And I don't like that I have to raise him that way, honestly. So how does that feel? Knowing that, you know, you always have to be told, like, okay, be careful because these people are getting shot. Or when you look at the news and you see that somebody just got killed or you hear parents talking about they're scared for their boys. And you see the pictures of the fathers hugging each other and the father's like, I'm worried about if he's going to die. And the son's saying the same thing. I feel a bit nervous for them and I feel sad that they think that is going to happen instead of praying that this person will be safe and all this person will not die so it makes you think about prayers what do we do in the mornings what we do in the morning we hug each other and we pray about what our day is going to be like and how it's going to happen. Then we talk about things that we feel like doing or things that we've talked about before. Then we start our day, right? Mm-hmm. So don't be detached, though, because they, they is still a part of our people, our culture, American citizens, black people, all of that. At the same time, I get the separation because we are us. And other people are who they are. And we all do make individual choices. In our family, we do use a lot of prayer and affirmations to affirm our lives. You know, there's always been chaos and problems out here in the world. This is not the first time. I pray it will be one of the last where it's this major, um, this, this disproportionate. At the same time, this movement of, of grief that's happening, anger and rage frustration, sadness. As much as people want to say, man, you ain't got to be positive. Positivity, what's that? It kills that negativity. Especially raising a young man. My son deserves to be able to live and live in a way where he can still be a child, live in a way where he still smiles, live in a way where he still goes for his goals, Live in a way where he knows he is supported. Live in a way where he knows he is loved. So that's one reason he's on the show today. Because more so than just tell you different ways to raise somebody and what you need to do in your house, I'd rather y'all hear it. I'd rather him share his experience. You want to ask of him? Like you had something on your mind? I feel happy that I am. Speak up. No, I don't really have anything to say. You said I feel happy, and then I said speak up. Because I, I said do speak feel up. happy. I do feel happy. That's all I have to say. Okay. And just because I say speak up, that doesn't mean speak up means to project your voice, not to shut yourself down. Yes, ma'am. If someone cannot hear you, they cannot hear you. Yes, ma'am. Right? Right. What's the purpose of speaking? To a person. So they can hear me. So people can hear me. Right. So someone says, oh my gosh, I can't hear you speak up. Does that mean, oh no, I don't have anything to say anymore. 
No, it means speak up so they can hear me. All right, why are you happy right now? I'm happy right now because I am uh, on this, um, is it podcast? Yes, sir. On this podcast with you. Mm -hmm. I enjoy spending time with you. I enjoy spending time with you a lot. When we do fun things or paint, I enjoy doing it with you. I wouldn't have it be another way. Mm, I appreciate that. I enjoy spending time with you, too. On that note, let's go to number two, right? So we talked about gratitude, conversation. You all hear how we engage, talk about morning routine. You mentioned that we do art together. So doing activities with our young men. Other than just telling them, like, okay, when you get older, know that, you know, the police is going to tell you when you pull over, they might or might not shoot you. Like, that's not that's not something that our children need to hear every day. Allow the children to be children, man. I mean, they can be aware without being scared. They can be prepared without living in fear. And we still deserve to provide them with opportunities to be children. When we're in our own houses, we're in our houses. We're in our homes. And typically, majority of us, when we're in our homes, we are very, very safe. So while we're in our homes, why not make the most beautiful memories and moments. And then also keep in mind the circle of life, right? You yeah. know, I'm not always going to be here, right? Yeah, you are always going to be here. Right. It'd be nice if it was, <laughs> but you can't. Right. We're all going to have to make that transition, right? Yep. And I think one thing that we all could benefit from is instead of focusing, focusing on when is that transition going to happen, Let's focus on what are we doing in the moment. Yeah. Focus on what's happening now instead of when the transition is going to happen. So what are some activities we do that you really enjoy? I like going for a walk with you a lot of the time. And then when we paint or draw together or... I try and teach you how to do some origami. I enjoy doing that with you. You laughing at the origami? Why are you laughing when you talking about origami? I do my best. I'm happy I do my that. very best. I'm not a master origamiist like oh. you, if that's even a word, origamiist. This young man sit here and do origami airplanes and just to have, I'm not even exaggerating, you guys, 30 to 54 steps. And they be like, Mom, here, let me show you how to do this. What? Are you serious? But I try. You know? And it's nice that you do try. Yeah. Give him an opportunity to teach me as well. So what's some other things we do? So you like doing the walks, the origami. I like when we cook. We cook together, you guys. I use cooking to teach about following directions, to learn about math, to talk about science. Because cooking incorporates all those things, even art, like how to make the food pretty and tasty at the same time. So using like regular things that we do, we got to eat every day. Why not make that into a fun activity? Why not just add something extra every now and then? You know, why not make it instead of just regular pancakes? Why not put some new ingredients in it or something? Or why not decorate the pancakes? When you're doing your vegetables, you know, we do different things with our veggies and just try new seasonings. I let him go in the cabinets and just kind of figure out what he want to put together. And we, you know, honestly, I have to say it's work majority. Not every time. Majority of times it works out to be a good decision. So in raising, to me, raising a black man in America is saying, or raising a young black boy in America is saying, let him learn. Let him be free. Let him explore. Don't shut him down just because of what's happening around us. Allow it to be fun. Does, do I get worried? Most times, no, because I, I make sure he's with people that I trust. And those people typically are going to be in places that are very safe and conducive and in alignment with the values and principles that I hold. And we're really intentional about those things. Now, as far as in general society, 
we spend time praying for all people, all families, because everyone is not in the same situation, the same environment, the same circumstances, the same places. And um, for those of you who've been tuning in, you know, a few weeks ago, I talked to you about my incident with the police. You know, granted, um, the beginning was scary. I called the awkward hello. You'll be hearing more about the awkward hello. I'm at the same time. I still made it home and was in one piece physically and was not injured. And for the most part, Savon, when you meet different police officers, what type of experience do you have? I have a good experience when we're near police officers. I have a good experience. Nothing bad happens. It's just, hello, how was your day? Oh, good and whatnot. And then they'd be on their way after doing whatever they had to do. Okay. So right now you've had positive experiences. Are you aware that sometimes the police do not have positive experiences with people who look like you? Yes, ma'am. I do. What do you think about that? I don't think it's right that police respond differently to melanated people because of their skin tone because they'll probably respect a white person more than a black person now do you think that's all police officers or just certain police officers certain police officers that's not good. all and that's the truth right right it's not all of them it's some of them and some. as adults we got to make sure that we clarify that for for our children too that it's not all people a lot of times we go through traumas and we have experiences and we want to say all. And that's that's too encompassing. That's part of the problem now is they're trying to say all black men are this and all black women are this and all white people are this and all yellow people are all, all these different things as opposed to recognizing there's going to be people who are extremists in every single culture, religion, job, school, they're just going to be people that are extreme. But they're extremely shut in and introverted or extremely, you know, on this whole other end of, of berserkness. And the thing we can do is teach how to be aware of behaviors. Teach the psychology behind a thing. Teach what mannerisms to look out for. Teach how to be aware of our own mannerisms that we're giving off. Right? So that's the third thing that we can do with our young boys. We're going to take a break. We'll play a song for you. We're going to come back and finish this dialogue about raising a son. Some of the things that we do, just sharing through some of our methodologies. When we come back after this song, we're going to talk about how do you correct behaviors without you being the police, right? Without you being the bad guy while still helping the child to grow. Then we'll do our meditation and our prayer. And we will be back. That's going to be what's up after this song. Call All You Need by Baron Grant. Enjoy. We <laughs>
right, you guys, we are back. We are back. Told you we're going to come back after this song. Talk about some discipline. How to discipline in a way that doesn't damage the child. Because our young black boys are going to become men one day. And I know you all, and if you haven't, you're going to hear it today. It's an old phrase that says a lot of times we coddle the boys and raise the girls. Meaning the women are being raised to believe in themselves. Black girl magic. Be confident. Be powerful. Go to school. You don't need anything. Handle it on your own. Women are being raised to be phenomenal. But then a lot of times the men, the little boys got left behind in that movement. So now you're seeing a lot of men step up with the mentorship programs and different conferences. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to be on a conference, Real Men Talk, on the 19th and 20th of this month with Terrence Leffridge. There are different events coming out to be like, hold up, our young men need it. But now the men are getting it once they have become adults a lot of times. Because sometimes a parent may not have the schedule to get their children to some of these programs because they're at awkward times. Or the programs are not in their area. Or so few things for boys that identify as boys. So with that, wanted to just go through a couple of concerns that people have, parents have in general, all of us have, and especially us, with not coddling our boys. Meaning when our boys do something wrong, it's not, oh, okay, baby, you're going to do that. Oh, I'm still here for you. But it's also not, hey, and then you just like abuse the crap out your child. You know, or the punishment is is like really borderline abuse, if not abuse. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Savon, this is going to be a weird question. It's going to be a weird question. Okay. 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 What are, what do you think are some of the concerns that parents have or what are some of the concerns you have as a child? Let's start with number one. I'm going to see if it matches this list right here. Um, I think the concerns that parents have is that they're not going to listen or they're going to touch something that they're not supposed to touch or move something without you saying they can. And then when they do it, they'll get in trouble. They're going to try and say somebody else did it. Okay, so I hear two things there. So one, messing with stuff you're not supposed to mess with. I'm going to summarize that. And two, lying. Yes. Okay. So I would agree that lying is definitely an issue that a lot of parents have. Because you want to trust your child. You want to believe your child. Now, what is something that we do or practice of on to ensure that you're telling the truth? Not that you're perfect. But what have we been doing to make sure that you tell the truth more? You used to lie a lot. I ain't gonna front. You used to lie a lot. I did. You did. And when you lie, what would happen? It would get you in trouble. Either get me in trouble or you would get what kind of consequence? Positive or negative? Negative consequence. What would be an example of negative consequence? Me getting me getting popped or not being able to go outside for a very long time. Me not being able to see my friends for a while. Okay, now, when you were told the truth, even if you did something you weren't supposed to do and you told the truth, what would happen? I would still... I would still have a consequence, but it'd be balanced. But it'd be balanced. What that mean, be balanced? But you know about balance. It'd be, it'd be even because a weight could be twenty pounds. Let's say, let's say you have two ten pound weights. You put it on the other side. I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it, but then, I, yeah. I'm just asking a simple just, question. When you would tell the truth, what did you realize, and how was the consequence compared to when you lied? What I realized from when it was from when I was telling the truth is that I wouldn't always, I wouldn't always have a, a bad consequence i would have more good i'd have more good consequences but then when i would lie it'd always be no you do not get this you do not get that you don't get anything no smiles no nothing it would just be disappoint it just looked like disappointment and you'd be upset so when you told the truth even when you did something wrong what would happen did you get one of those punishments or what happened what happened was I would have a I would still have a 
small con I'd have a small consequence, but it would but I would still have a good outcome though. A lot of times you guys we would have a conversation. So you know them lectures like you used to hear back in the day and you'd be like, Oh my god, I wish this lecture would end. I was trying to get him to just say that. You know, because that's what it is versus him just saying it was a good outcome. The good outcome is he didn't have to have a punishment in the sense of taking something away, but we did have a conversation and lecture. And a lot of times with our boys, we don't talk to them. We always just skip to, boom, here goes this this punishment. But instead, if we take time to explain, okay, this is why this behavior is not appropriate. Or this is why this behavior is dangerous. This is why I just don't like that. Because sometimes it's not about it being dangerous or inappropriate as the the ruling factor in the household. It just might be some things that you just don't want done in your house. Period. And as the adult, you have the right to say, this is just not what I want in my house. If you want the towels put in the cabinet and not put on the bed, you have the right to tell the child that and the child needs to understand that. Whether it's a boy or a girl. Not, oh, well, they don't feel like doing this, so I'll do it. No. Or being honest. That's the biggest thing that gets a lot of our boys in trouble and our girls, not telling the truth. But then we got to show them what's the benefit of telling the truth. And then we also have to tell the truth and let them see us doing that and being honest. We got to model the behaviors that we want. We can't be old school, like old, old, old school do what I say and not what I do. That's not, that's not, that's just not this generation. That's not how they function. They have so much information at their hands. Hence, one of the concerns of most parents, cyberbullying. Bullying and cyberbullying, internet safety. Those are two of the top concerns for most parents right now is the whole internet thing. So my son and I have an agreement about internet. I check his phone whenever I feel like it period, because I pay the bill. I will clear it out. I will discuss. Savannah, what happens with your phone when I look on your internet? What my mom does, she will go, she'll go on my phone and check what I've been watching or what I search. Some stuff will be weird that I've looked it up before and it's still, and it's still there in the search history and on the internet. And then it'd be like, then we'd have a discussion about why was this up there or why was this video right here or playing or whatnot. It'd just be a discussion about why do I watch this? Why do I watch this or why do I search that? And is everything always because it's something negative? No, just because it's something that you don't want to see or you don't like. Which would still be negative. So everything mm -hmm. I ask you about on your phone is something that I don't like. No, some things that are on my phone is something that you do like. If um, Things that you do like with, that I search is like how to build a car or how to work on a rat rod or how to make a plane or how to make RC plane. Do I ask you about those things too? You do ask me about those things too. How does that make you feel when I ask you about the things that you're interested in? It makes me feel happy that you're asking me about the things I'm interested in. Why? Because I get to I get to explain why I watch and I search those things. Uh, because I like searching up RC cars and cars a lot of the time. And I like to tell you about cars and RC cars. I like telling you about the different version. I like telling you about the different versions of RC cars and certain cars and what cars use to run or parts that cars need. What else do you look up? You don't just look up cars. You have videos on a whole lot of up. different stuff. Then sometimes I might... I look up sometimes about... Music, um... What kind of music? Old school music or electric swings of cartoon music. 
What's an electric swing of cartoon music, for those who don't know? Electric swing is when you add... Elect- is when you add electronic music to the original song and then you remix it so it sounds great so it sounds good okay and then you blend it all together so it actually so it plays out how you want it to it might take different versions and tests and then we'll come out with the final product of what the electric swing will be it's pretty awesome so you guys Taking time to get to know our children. That will cut down on the cyberbullying because now our children are supported. They feel confident. And then we're spending more time with them, which some of the other concerns that parents have is stress levels for children, depression, unhealthy eating, not getting enough exercise, drug abuse, school violence, and then sexting and motor vehicle accidents. A lot of these these things that we're concerned about as parents will decrease when we spend time with our children. And we got to be patient. Do it mean that everything they do we're going to like? No, definitely not. Does it mean that everything we do they're going to like? No, definitely not. I'm pretty sure some of the games I play with my son and bring up to him, he'd be like, Mommy, I'm not trying to play tic-tac-toe again. But then sometimes he's like, hey, Mommy, let's play tic-tac-toe. Right? Sometimes when I talk to him and I'm like, man, can you name five activities we do? And he looking at me like he lost and got me feeling like, uh, am I imagining something? Am I making up something? Right. And then like, oh, mommy, you know, we do all this stuff all the time. But then when I ask him, sometimes he had like, he just don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm just this crazy woman who was living in this little fantasy world. Do I like that very much? Nope, I don't. I do not. But then I do like the fact that we do the activities and hopefully, you know, as he develops in his ability to remember things or he gets older with his children, a lot of these things will pass down. Or when I see him with his friends, I see him actually showing them the same games that he couldn't quote unquote remember when he was being asked. Like a lot of children, my concern with black boys is they have question anxiety, right? And we have to help them with that. They get very nervous when being asked questions. They get very nervous when being asked to explain something or give details. And this isn't just young boys. This is teenagers and grown men as well. There's like an innate paranoia for some reason. It comes from somewhere regarding just having questions. And we got to support them in that. We got to help them understand the importance of Just telling the truth. When you tell the truth, there's nothing to try to remember. When you're not trying to be smart and you just be yourself, it's not hard to speak. Instead of trying to sound like everybody else and be like everybody else, if you be yourself, there's nothing to ever question within yourself. Yes, ma'am. The way that I speak as your parent and the way you speak is not going to be the same because I'm a grown behind person. Yes, ma'am. And we have to remind our children of that. Because, yes, they want to mimic us. They want to be like us. They are following our example. But we also have to be mindful they are still children. So even if they can use a big word and say this and that, if they don't understand what that word means, there's no point in them using it. Allow them to speak how they speak. Allow them to be who they are. But also do support and push them to develop and grow and be better. You know, engaging in conversation with our children helps a lot of those things. Savon, would you like to share anything you think is helpful with... I mean, you're you're a young melanated boy, quote-unquote black boy in America... Do you think there's anything that you would like to share before we do our meditation and close out that you want to share with all the listeners? All of y'all are great in your own ways. All of y'all are great in your own ways. Y'all like certain things. And it's great that... You all have different things that you like to do. You have ho- you might have hobbies that you like to do. And it's great. 
That's all I have to say right now. Well, yeah, that really is all I have to say. All right, so I'm going to ask my question differently. As a young man in America, what do you want people to know about how you feel or how you think? What I feel like... Or maybe your friends think. What I think about being, what I think about being in America as a melanated boy, is that it's great to meet other people and go to events. We can't go to events right now with COVID. Yeah. Present time, Savannah. We were talking Present the other time. day, and you said a lot of things, and now you have an opportunity to share what you was thinking with the world, and now you sitting here trying to be something and I can tell when you're doing that yes ma'am what what I'm thinking about doing is driving RC cars around while outside alone with my mom just talking about whatever and looking up at the sky and looking up at the clouds That's what I think about doing sometimes sometimes or play or I'd want to play a game with her play a game with you so you guys I want to remind you, my son is eleven, and it's amazing to me how. In a private conversation, my son will say things like, man, he doesn't necessarily favor some of the decisions of the president. And I told him to have your own mind. Or he'll say, wow, I wish I could go out here and play with my friends. Or he'll say, man, he missed going to school, but he enjoyed being at home because he learned more. These are things that he's told me. And so now that I'm asking him to share it with you all, it amazes me that he's not thinking about it. Or he's not even wanting to share that. Because he has spent a lot of energy expressing that. At the same time, I'm not amazed by it or surprised by it because we talked about it to the point of saying, don't let what's happening outside in this world stop you from enjoying the greatness of your own life. And so within all of that, that's what that's what just happened. That's what he just showed is that he finally processed like, let me just focus on what I want to do, you know, for my own life with myself without being concerned about all the negative things in the world. Would that be true or false of mine? That is, that is true. But what were some of your concerns, though? We don't have much time left on the show. I really want you to be able to share what were some of the concerns that you have had since COVID has hit and since You've seen the riots. You went downtown and saw the riots and stuff. What were some of your concerns? Some of my concerns are that some people in their jobs or places where they work, they won't be able to, don't be able to open back up. Why? Because they won't have anything to sell. The windows will be broken and... It probably cost. It probably costs a lot of money to fix. A lot of money to fix because of what, though, Savannah? Because they're breaking to? win. Because they're breaking windows, stealing stuff that could be very expensive for like certain companies and businesses. Okay, so with the riots, you guys, see, this is where patience come in, right here. And I said, I'm grateful that I'm patient. I'm a perfectionist, okay? And I am, I have a really, really high IQ. And so I have to work on being patient when not just my son, but people in general are not able to um, explain or connect their thoughts, or if it's not what I think it should be, right? And with our children, it's important to give them the space to express it however they express it, but also 
do our best because it ain't always going to work out, but do our best and not give up on our children to help them continue to grow. So with that, we're going to do our meditation. We're going to do an affirmative meditation, okay? It's going to be real brief. Whatever it is that you want to work on, remember at the beginning I said, what's the one thing you want to work on? I want you to think about that. That one thing. Now I want you to speak as if you've already mastered it. So Savon, what were you working on? I was working on doing my work quicker. Okay. So he said listening, and then we decided I was doing this work quicker. So listening, doing this work quicker. And what was mine? Yours was... Now I'm going to change it, though. I'm going to work. I'm grateful for my patience, but I'm also going to continue to work on my patience. I'm going to work on accepting others' nuances. I'm going to work on accepting others' nuances. So I'm going to actually change mine to accepting other people's nuances. So whatever yours was, you guys, think about it. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a deep breath in and you're going to affirm you already did that thing. So instead of saying, I'm going to work on it, it's, for me, I am accepting of other people's nuances. And I'm going to breathe in and I'm just going to affirm that to myself. So we're going to breathe in. When you breathe in, you're going to lift your arms up in the air like a tree. And you're going to bring them back down into your lap. Okay? Okay. So we're going to breathe in. And you're going to affirm to yourself, I am, and then whatever that thing is for you, okay? okay. I am. I am. And you say, I'm grateful that I am, and whatever that thing is. So, I'm grateful that I am, breathe in. I'm grateful that I am. I love myself for growing. Myself for growing. I embrace the spirit of the most high. I embrace the spirit of the most high. All is well. All is well. I want you to just sit for the next 15 seconds and just continue to breathe. Thank you, Savon, for coming on the show today. You're welcome. I appreciate you being here with us. I appreciate being here to talk to you all, and I appreciate being here with you. Awesome. You guys, thank you all for joining in. Be sure to tune into another episode of Grown Folks Talking Live with Dr. Akila Faye. We love you. We adore you. May the Creator continue to watch over you, keep you, and guide you. And everybody be safe out here. Continue to stay uplifted, continue to stay empowered, continue to stay encouraged. And next week, my son may be out of town. And if he is, we're still going to go more in depth about the parenting, just on the internal aspect of ways that we can stay focused and stay positive while raising children during this time. And be mindful. Our children may not always know what to say or how to say it, or sometimes they may not be comfortable saying it at all times, you know. We got to catch them when they ready. But we have to be there to support them. Love you all. Be blessed. Again, this is Dr. Akilah Fay, A-C-Q-U-I-L-L-A-F-A-Y-E. Follow me on IG, you guys. Find me on IG and hit that follow button so you can keep in touch and inbox me. Let's start using IG. IG, A-C-Q-U-I-L-L-A-F-A-Y-E. I love you all. Mm-hmm. Until next time, peace, peace, peace.